with this year's tagline of WrestleMania Goes Hollywood. You certainly would be faulted if you were expecting some type of big time extravaganza. But a couple of weeks out from WrestleMania 39, are you really feeling like that? I mean, if the reports are accurate, I can certainly understand why they are. Triple H wanting fewer matches on this year's show. Yeah, I kind of get it. Because as I look at this match card a couple of weeks out, it looks pretty mid. Yeah, really mid. And I don't think it's the fact, well, The Rock's not going to wrestle Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. No, that's not it. That would have been nice, but that's not it. I don't think it's the, well, you don't have Sami Zayn facing Roman Reigns in some way, shape, or form for the championship at WrestleMania. No, I don't, that's not it either. It's just, you look at this year's show, and there's just something missing. And I think some of it is certainly star power. Some of it is just certainly interesting stories and feuds heading into it. Like, I pulled up last year's match card for WrestleMania, and I was looking at the whole card. Obviously, you remember some, like, key matches, some key highlights, but, like, you look at night one of WrestleMania last year. You had Logan Paul and The Miz tagging up against the Mysterios. Like, that ended up being a really good spotlight and showcase for Logan Paul, right? Bianca Belair taking on and defeating Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship. Big moment for Bianca Belair. You had the rumored and reported return of Cody Rhodes to WWE, and that was a big feel moment for last year's show. You forget about Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey, because that stunk to high hell. But your main event of night one was Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on Kevin Owens. You had freaking Stone Cold at WrestleMania in a match for the first time in God knows how long. Since, what, 2003? In an actual full-on match? That was night one. And then, like, night two, you had that great Anything Goes match between Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn. You had Edge and AJ Styles. You had Pat McAfee taking God Austin Theory, and then Vince McMahon is working at WrestleMania, and he's actually getting in the ring for a match. Like, it's fucking Vince, you know what I mean? And then Austin's coming out, because you know eventually that's going to lead to something with Austin. And then you had Roman taking on Brock for the championship, and Roman wins it all. Like, last year's show, heading into it, and I, you probably could call me a hypocrite. I'm sure if you go back and look, and be like, I'm not looking that much forward to last year's show. That was probably, <laughs> that something got absolutely said. So I feel a bit of a hypocrite if I'm saying it again. But it, it's the way I feel. Like, I look at Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. It does feel like a pay-per-view main event for WWE. But at this moment in time, it doesn't feel like a WrestleMania main event. This feels more like a secondary pay-per-view main event. Just my opinion. You got some star power, certainly, for the women. You've booked Trish Stratus and Lita for WrestleMania. Nice little nostalgia play there. Uh, but they're in a six-woman tag match, which also includes Becky Lynch and Bayley, which really feels like a poor utilization of resources. Just that whole story there just doesn't grab me and doesn't excite me. Just like, frankly, the story between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. Personally, for me does not grab me, does not really get me excited. You got Brock Lesnar facing Amos, and the best thing I could say about it is, at least Brock said no, brother, to <laughs> Bray Wyatt. Um, that, what, what else can you really say? Like, obviously the visual of this seven-foot-plus motherfucker looking down at Brock Lesnar, you know who is behind that. Oh, can you imagine? That's such good shit. It's the city versus the cowboy. Yeah! You already know that's Vince McMahon 100% of the way. But, yeah, again, that just doesn't really strike me. Austin Theory and John Cena? Nah. That feels more to me of a downgrade for John Cena than it does an upgrade and elevation of Austin Theory, just my opinion. I'm sure Gunther versus what will likely be Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, that match will probably fuck at WrestleMania, but the build-up to it has really stunk to me. Both of the women's title matches are incredibly underwhelming to different degrees. Asuka versus Bianca, 
it's the better match, I think, is the way it's going to play out with the story. Oh, we're going to play keep away with the belt. Meh. And don't even get me started on fucking Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. That should be a total squash job by Rhea Ripley. She should destroy Charlotte Flair. Let her have her mommy moment at WrestleMania. Why? Because Charlotte Flair absolutely fucking sucks. And the fact that that is seemingly being positioned to be the night one main event is a goddamn joke. How in the hell could you have a, with a straight face, look at me and tell me that Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair deserves the main event night one of WrestleMania over Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos? Like, seriously, real talk. The company has revolved around the Bloodline storyline for the year, for a year. The company has revolved around Sami Zayn and his involvement with the Bloodline for a fucking year. Those guys involved with that story, not just Sami Zayn, but others, they deserve that night one main event slot at WrestleMania. Charlotte Flair fucking does not. You want to send the people home happy? Here's a newsflash. Don't count on Charlotte Flair in a goddamn big spot at WrestleMania because she don't damn deliver. Unbelievable. But yeah, both of those women's title matches to me, no interest at all. You got Edge and Finn Balor in Hell in a Cell. Okay. Obviously, the story at least calls for it. So that's a positive compared to how the Hell in a Cell has been used in recent years. However, this is just the type of feud I've never really been much into. The match could certainly be great, just as long as Edge wins is all I care about, but I'm not really, like, emotionally invested in it. I'm really not. Like, when I look at it, the three matches I'm most excited about for WrestleMania right now, one of them is involving Dominic Guerrero, I mean Mysterio, against Rey Mysterio. You've been building to this one forever, and I go back almost two fucking decades, the ladder match for custody of Dominic. It's Eddie's son versus Rey, damn it, and you'll never tell me otherwise! So yeah, I'm fucking hyped up for that. The only way this would have been better is if they really would have went with Ray as like the overbearing baseball dad, the overbearing AAU dad. That would have fucking set this over the moon. Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Seth, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. This is the non-bloodline match that I'm most excited for at WrestleMania. I really wish Bad Bunny was on this show this year. That would have fucked too, right? Um, shit, you might have done Logan Paul versus Bad Bunny. Why the hell not? But Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins, if this match sucks, I'll be stunned. If this match doesn't fuck, I'll be even more stunned. Like, the heat is there. You could just feel the chemistry. Like, I'm legitimately, legitimately interested in this one. So, yeah, that I'm really excited for. I'm actually more excited for Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins then I am Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns, to which some of you are going to say, that's because you're afraid your tribal chief, your hero, is going to lose to Cody Rhodes. No, it's not even that. I just don't think the story's there. It's just not interesting enough to me. When I've seen Cody Rhodes come out and help a Sami Zayn, it leads me more to believe that I want to see Cody Rhodes team up with Sami Zayn at WrestleMania to take on the Usos, not Sami Zayn team up with Kevin Owens. Like it's been distracting in some ways. So I'm just not bought into it. And even if they have Roman drop the strap, will I think it's stupid at that particular moment in time? Absolutely. Will I rant a little bit about it? Absolutely. Will I get over it very quickly? Absolutely. But I'm more interested in Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins than I am Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. And then obviously the match I'm probably most emotionally invested in is Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Usos. But I don't even is that even officially announced yet? I'm probably just projecting it at this point. But that might not even be the main event of night one. The matches that I'm the most excited about, or the potential matches I'm most excited about, won't even be the main event. That's a problem. I don't know how, how, how we're others thinking about WrestleMania 39 now. We're a couple weeks out. Like, are you guys really, really excited about this? Am I alone in thinking that this card looks pretty damn mid this year? As I just go up and down the card and I say, man, 
I really feel like something, something is missing. And what I really think that something is, is honestly, it's big time star power. You have some star power on this show. You know, I'm not trying to undersell that. You do have Cena, you do have Lesnar, you do have Edge. You do have Roman, obviously. Um, and even Cody feels like a star, not nearly to the level of those other guys I just mentioned. But So you have some star power. You have Logan Paul, obviously. Uh, but one, one of the most interesting acts on your show, and likely to be one of your best matches on the show, is a fucking YouTube guy. You got some problems here. I'm just saying. So I hope this show in a couple of weeks is going to deliver and kick ass on both nights. But I'm not feeling great about it right now. It feels like it's going to be a mid-ass show. 